The story so far. Our hero, the elf woman Anyetta DeVoe, has just returned from her journey abroad to find a spell to combat a demon, a malignant spirit, a corrupted ghost of a man once living, sought to wreak chaos in the world he left behind. The spell Anyetta found should destroy him once and for all. But before she can continue her mission, she must continue with the new misadventures that come her way. How are your legs feeling this morning? Absolutely aching from those final few k's on foot. I could heal these cramps in seconds, but it's good to remember what physical pain is once in a while. You've got a new client in the tea room. She arrived about five minutes ago. Seemed to know you were back. Well, then again, don't need pain when there's work to do. What's she like? She's this white woman. Charlotte, that is so racially insensitive. They're called Caucasians. No, I mean it. She's literally white. Check her out. Anyetta entered the tea room to see the woman who was indeed white. Skin the colour of chalk, youthful with bright blue eyes, grey hair tied back, dressed in layers of red hooded robes, looking like a cross between an eastern warrior and a monk. Good morning. I'm Anyetta DeVoe. Huh, strange. Your name is not pronounced how it's written. Uh, nah, it's one of them weird ones from up north. Different language with the silent consonants. Only when my accent gets old of it, you lose even more. Hmm. I am Trina. I come to you for help. You can talk to spirits, solve murders with your power. In a way, yeah. Uh, do you want me to help you solve one? I hope so. It might be difficult. How do you mean? Because the murder happened 16 years ago. In a world of magic and mystery, one elf woman fights crime and the forces of evil in her own unconventional way. These are The Misadventures of Anyetta Devo. Episode 6, Nightmare. Written by Royce Pentagast and Sarah Frass. An historic murder case? Well, maybe... I've never been able to use my powers to track something back more than a few days, sometimes weeks. Years, though? Well, I mean, there's more to solving crime than magic. The busies can often solve them with just detective skills and practices. So why come to me? Perhaps it is better I show you, but I need more space. Have you a backyard? It's sort of a alley behind the tavern. I will see you out there. With a whoosh and a crack, Trina disappeared. Anyetta stood and looked around, her magic showing no trace of where Trina had disappeared to. Confused, she walked back out to the tavern. Did you see Trina, the white lady, come through here? No. Why? What's happened? She just disappeared in a puff of smoke. I don't know what happened to her. The back door to the tavern opened, Trina standing there, waiting. Come on, we haven't got all day. Does she climb out the window really fast or something? I think she travelled with magic. How did you do that? That? Oh, it was nothing. Children's tricks. I wanted to show you this. Waving her tattooed hands, orange sparks cracked into thin air and flew past them both. The scenery around them changed and Anietta found herself standing back in the tea room. Trina sat before her. Now you've transported me to the tea room? Not quite. Behind Trina sitting at the table, another Trina phased through the wall, coming to a stop with her hands held behind her back. This is a memory a few moments ago, just as you walked in Good and morning. said this, I'm and I said oh, that. Strange. I can reconstruct my own memories with 100% accuracy most of the time. I can revisit them in person. Cast my imaginings into physical space. Hang on. Let me check. Okay, wow. When I sit at that table, there's a scratch in the wood on the underside that I pick at. That same scratch is there. So, you're like... taking a complete record of everything that was there, whether you were conscious of it or not, down to the very last speck of dust. What about spirit trails? The, the imprints left behind? Oh, wow. Have you... Can you see this? The trail you left? I can't do spirit magic like you can. As far as I know, no one can. Which is why I've come to you. 
Well, I mean, a lot of people can. They're all elves, but there's not many of them living here and no one's selling their services like me, but uh, whatever. What have you got? I grew up in a forest on the central plateau. My family moved there from far away. A small community of us. My family and several others who lived there for years. Some children and I went away one day, the last day. And when we returned, this is what we found. Once again casting the orange sparks, the scene before them changed to one of utter devastation. Trees were burnt, the sky was red, bodies littered the ground, hacked with the marks of swords, some burnt. And Yetta felt the presence of spirits tortured, cut short. As she floated into the central house, the bodies of a man and a woman with chalk-white skin lay on the floor, cut down too by swords. Well, talk about a tragic backstory. I come to you today to see if you can help me solve this once and for all. I've revisited this memory more times than I should have ever had to. But the trails I can follow have all gone cold. So you want me to see if I can follow a spirit trail in your memory? Well, it's worth a shot. What happened? You were a kid, but do you remember anything that happened before that day? There was a man, I think he was my uncle, who arrived a few days before it all happened. Waving her hand once more, the scene changed, but this time to blackness. A slot of light in the front of them like a door ajar, voices drifting through. You can't be serious. The sword of McCarvin. With your powers, we could find it. I will not abandon my family and their lives for some foolish chase across the continents. But the sword is real, I tell you. And we do not care. It's over, Pascal. You're throwing me out? You will regret this, all of you. You will wish you stayed in the Raconist wastes. You are spawn, a servant of the mother. What a charming individual. Hold up. L- let me grab that. The trail this man left behind. You suspect he was responsible? I do. He betrayed them for not helping him. If that man did not kill my family, well... And yet I locked on to the spirit trail of Trina's uncle, and Trina returned them to the murder scene of her family. Casting a spell, she identified the same trail within the house, lingering before leaving, continuing to live, and leaving the bodies of Trina's family behind. Well, it was there the night they died. Then, it is all the proof we need. Not quite. Whatever happened then, it was unlike anything I've felt before. Feelings of darkness I can't describe. Were your parents mages too? They were. And this sword of Carnarvon. What is that? An ancient relic of a demon prince. Lost, found, stolen over the years. World's magic I do not know. It is famous. Perhaps your magic library has more information about it? Trina walked down the alley after banishing the vision, teleporting to the streets with Danietta struggling to keep up. The white witch in red drew eyes as she strode down the street, uncaring of the horses and carriages that swerved to avoid her. Oi! Watch where you're going! Trina, wait! What makes you think that this sword thing is even going to be in any of the books in the library? I've gone through all of them, and if it's something that famous, how haven't I heard of it? I had not heard of potato chips and record players before I come here. But they're everywhere. Doesn't mean they didn't exist. Perhaps you just have been reading the wrong books? Okay, yeah, true. But the thing about the library, I don't think I can help you much there. They banned me. Banned you? Why is that? Might have made a bit of a scene in a drunken, sleep-deprived state when I couldn't find the thing I was looking for. For all the good I've done, they won't let me back in. Then we will have to convince them. Library is this way, yeah? Okay, yeah, but walk on the footpath, okay? By the way, what was that last memory? Why was it so dark? It was incomplete. I've had to try my best to reconstruct it over the years, with little success. Huh. So, your memories, I mean, they're not infallible. For someone with such incredible recall, your memory isn't the best. Only when I need it to be. The two witches walked into the library, a few city blocks over, through the pillared-lined doors to the foyer. 
No, no. Mr. Vaux, you know the rules. You are banned from this establishment for 23 more months. I'm just seeing a mate in. It's no bother. No bother. Your outburst caused quite a lot of bother last time you were here, so you nor your friend are coming in here. Trina sighed before dematerializing. What? What did she do? I don't know. And she ain't a friend, she's a client. And we're working together to solve a historic murder case. I found it. And Yetta and the librarian looked up. Trina stood on the mezzanine above, holding up a leather-bound tome with several other books under her arm. How did she do that? Remarkable. Some kind of instantaneous traversal, the means of which are magic and unlike any I've witnessed before. It's a big world, a lot of stuff in it. I think the ban might be a little extreme. You can go through if you allow me to study the space you materialized into. You people acting like you've never seen it before. It's nothing, really. Trust me, if I could do what you're doing, I'd be committing so much brie larceny. Cheese theft. Oh, I loves me some cheese. And tastes better when it's stolen. Oh, that is curious. That book on ancient magic relics you have there was being read by a man only yesterday. It's strange. It's never really been read much before. I think he had the same accent as you do. Where is it you hail from? Hang on. Trina, give me the book. Setting the book down on the library's counter, Agneta cast a spell to analyze the trails of those who touched it. Besides her, Trina's and the librarian's, a fourth most recent trail was familiar, a little aged, but nonetheless, the exact same trail. What is it? Your uncle was here in the city. We've got to follow that trail. The two followed the spirit trail from the library through the streets of Varajun, out of the central city to the south, where the buildings there were less impressive, dirtier. The trail led them to a small hotel and a web of the same trail heading in and out of the building. Agneta and Trina followed the strongest, the most recent. It snaked them through the city, the twisting lanes and streets, straight into the cemetery. Its high walls and iron gates hiding even the more imposing tombs and mausoleums that resided within. Looks like we're getting closer. Must lead in there. Your powers are impressive. When I came to the city and asked around for someone who could help, I was lucky to be pointed your way. You sure were. Thing is though, they said you were a dark elf, which is strange, because they have blue tattooed skin and you don't. Hmm. Huh. You'll have to tell me who told you that. Hang on. Cemetery Street. That's relation for symmetry. Talk about sly. All oh, lazy. What's next? A baker on Pain Lane? What's Pain? No need to get existential here. But then again, I guess you're about to confront the person who maybe killed your parents. So it's understandable. He did kill them. I know it. Best wait until we get the confession. Oh, and Pain is relation for bread. Who dares approach me with weapons drawn? That sounds like him. We've come to face you! Really count as yourself, yeah? You have followed me to a dead end, which is what you shall be if you continue. You killed my family, your sister. Show yourself, and I might show mercy. Oh, it is you, the little witch. I did not expect, but you come here in vain, spawn. I have the advantage in my position. Trina teleported dramatically atop one of the mausoleums, orange sparks flying from her hands as the wind caught her robes. Not while I'm here, you don't. Rise! The lid of the tomb next to Agneta cracked open as the skeleton within rose up and walked towards Trina's position. Draugers! This damn graveyard's got Draugers! What the f***? They are under my command, Anita. Feel not. You betrayed my family, your sister. Now, you confess. The uncle had stumbled out as reanimated corpses herded him into the center of the cemetery before he froze in place. Trina materialized behind him, holding her hands to the side of his head. Sparks flying once more as the scene of her parents' death appeared from the darkness. This time, it was from his perspective. 
awaking to find devastation upon the forest settlement. In the distance, a glowing green figure, a long blade in hand as it stepped down from her parents' house, slicing down people as it advanced forwards. He ran through the forest, the green figure chasing him. The memory vanished as Trina reappeared next to Agneta, looking haunted. It can't be true. You have been searching for the wrong person, witch. Your precious family died by a demon in green, summoned by their own depressed spells. Then at least, I can simply hate you for who you are. <laughs> Be gone, witches. Your theater tricks are nothing. You're really starting to annoy me. Come out and face me, coward. You call me that. It's what you are. Hiding behind a wall, throwing your fireballs like a child with a slingshot. Face me! The man stepped back into view, fists aflame. Are you threatening me? I am. I challenge you. Who's the fastest throw? The two stood at either end of the path, staring each other down, their hands twitching, waiting for the other to strike. He taunted Agneta, but she stayed still, ignoring his false throws before hurling a ball of fire her way. Barely thinking, she caught it and hurled it back, setting him alight. It's all in the reflexes. It's time to go. This tomb somehow safe from the trader. It wasn't him. I was certain. You wanted it to be him, though. Our memories are subjective. No matter how much we think we remember, we never get the full picture. I don't know. You know what they say, 60% of the time. There has to be something else. A knight in green. Does that mean anything to you? I don't know. Where do I go now? What do I do? I guess I should thank you and pay you for your service. You've done a lot to help me. I think you know where. The place where it happened. And hold off on the pay. I'm not done with you yet. The two hired a carriage and journeyed out of the city, further inland and higher up to the central plateau, into the clouds and to the barren rocky land known to be the domain of dragons, escaped convicts, and cults. Where once verdant forests stood was now sandy wastes. The forms of calcified trees littered the landscape, and the remnants of the dwellings rotted away. The carriage only took them so far as they made the rest of the journey on foot, soon coming to a stop where the village once stood. Ah, ah, ah. It's a lot further gone than I'd hoped. Could it still work? I'll cast a spell. I should be able to align it with the echoes of the space. It's working! Even with the land transformed from what you knew before, the echoes upon it still remain. The reality feeding the memories, making it stronger, giving a clearer picture of what happened here. Our memories are strange things, both haunting and protecting us from the worst things that happen. Trying to explain the inexplicable. It's here. I saw a picture. I see it. What was the night in green, Trina? Search your memories. To try and make sense of it. I remember. A bright flash of light. The two were thrown back. Before them, Dressed in armor of the far east that melded his body like a humanoid insect, a haunting demon mask a part of his face, a knight in green stood up before them with his arms outstretched. Free at last. After 16 years in the depths of the witch's mind, waiting, I stand in this world once more. Suppose you should thank us for helping you. I should. Were it not for your little therapy session, I'd have remained on the edge of death for the rest of her natural life. She has a name, you know, and it's Trina. So, demons have therapy in the beyond, do they? I've been living off her knowledge for 16 years. Every piece of information, every person's mind she infiltrated, every experience as if I lived it, so much of it trivial. You're a parasite, then? Not by choice. So you were trapped in her mind then? Buried deep beneath half memories and fictions? Why's that then? Survival. Wait, so you hid in her mind to survive, but just said that you didn't do so by choice? Oh no! It wasn't your survival. 
It was Trina's. Trina, you okay? They were, were betrayed. It was... It was... Don't speak, Trina. It's going to be okay. Now, Mr. Knight, you were drawn to this world somehow, then banished or destroyed, at, at least partially. You said you were on the edge of death, but you clung on through Trina's memory, feeding off her power, sustaining your life force, but trapped at the same time, suppressed, almost forgotten so she could survive and keep living, only for the memories to come back the minute she returned to the place of her trauma. You are perceptive, and a soldier based off your stance and drawn blade. I could have used someone like you during the assault on the beyond. My forces were weak and unimaginative. How about we stick to present motivations before we start digging in your backstory, pal? What happened here, 16 years ago? The Sword of Makovnon. A relic hunted for centuries, from crusades fought in my lifetime to the grave robbers of today. It was your uncle, Treen, who came to your parents' house in need of their support. And understandably, they said no. I've learnt in this day and age of relative peace People are less keen to take up arms in some selfish pursuit. They sent him on his way, but started to feel hesitation. Maybe they were too harsh. So who better than to call on than their spirit guide? Me. You what? For an open-minded person, you sure have closed-minded ideas. The world over, spirits take on different forms. They're not just some curiosity or foe to be vanquished. Did you ask Trin about her family? The White Witch Sisterhood, each member protected by a guardian household spirit. And I was her families who they could call on in times of need. What is thy bidding? Guardian spirit, our home is plagued by dark wraiths. Can you ward them off? The wraiths will rue the day they decided to plague your house. You have called upon me? The crows are at our crops once again. Have you a spell or some force you can help to defend them? Such problems are of no match for my might. But perhaps you should invest in a scarecrow. Of course, yes. Thank you, guardian spirit. Oh, one thing before you go. What be it? What is a scarecrow? So what happened? Did something go wrong? Betrayed us. I might be their household spirit, but it doesn't mean I don't have a life outside serving them. We lead a charge at dawn, pushing all our forces to the front gate, where we will... Oh, sorry. They're summoning me. Yes? Do you remember where I put my keys to the shed? What? Ah, in a pocket of your coat. Really? Oh. About Is that all? Good. I was in the midst of storming the gates of the beyond with my army, only to get someone back over some trivial matter, a treasure hunt. So I raised the village to the ground. You killed the family? The whole village? Out of pettiness? Haven't you heard anything about religion or mythology? I'm a spirit. Pettiness is kind of our thing. He lunged forwards, and yet are barely blocking the slashes of his great sword as the fight took them away from the remnants of the village and through the calcified forest. When she got hits in, her sword glanced off his armor before giving up and running away as fast as she could, the clanking of the knight ever at her heels. She tripped, struggling to pull herself back up as he bore down on her before a bright flash and Trina materialized. You betrayed them. Now I remember. I also remember how you died and how to kill you now. No more hiding, and now you die. Sparks flew, and from the darkness appeared a visage of Trina's mother. Trina's memory, her final moments, casting a spell and vanquishing the night all those years ago. And now, Trina cast the spell herself, and vanquished him now. For good, silence fell as Trina helped Anietta to her feet. Memories, eh? Wicked things. How did he survive after all that time, living in my mind? First thing to know about spirits and magic, it's all a bunch of nonsense we try and make sense of with our own rules and understandings. Sometimes, spirits bond to a person, and I guess he did so through your memory. And from that he came back. I was so horrified by what happened. 
Maybe I couldn't make sense of it. So I came up with a story I could. It makes sense. You did it to survive. And you did survive. Then and now. And that's awesome of you. How are you feeling? I feel okay now. But time will tell. Thank you, Anita Devon. Without your help facing it, it would have haunted me forever. You did all the hard work yourself, confronting and beating to death the physical manifestation of your trauma. That's some pretty good therapy there. Now I must decide what to do with myself. For the first time in forever, I don't have this hanging over me. Look, it's your choice to make, so take it at your own pace. Come on, we best head off. I'll drive us back to the city. Maybe I could get your help with something. What do you need? Well, firstly, I want you to take me to whoever told you about the dark elf who could help you. Then, we're going to find out where he lives, find out how much cheese he's got, and put that teleportation power of yours to good use. The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, starring... Liz Corrick as Agneta. Get Lilo Estrina. Glenn Pryor as The Knight. Joshua Law as Pascal. Skylar Bow as Charlotte. Haley Ann McCready as Librarian. And Michael Mengada as the narrator. Theme music composed by Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Produced by City Park Radio 2022.